What's going on today? We're jumping into the top assault rifle loadouts for every single AR in the game. I'm going to go straight down the line, give you guys a top meta loadout for every AR we got right now. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like for the algorithm, subscribe for more, and let's hop into this. The first gun we got for you guys here today is going to be the TAC-56. So like I said, we're going to go straight on down the whole line of assault rifles. So let's hop into it. This can be a long range meta loadout for this gun. So first thing we have is the Harbinger D20. So this is going to give it the sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness. This is tuned for a plus 81 and a plus plus 0.48 after that we're gonna go up in here we have the 17.5 tundra pro barrel this is gonna be tuned here for a plus 15 and a plus 10 this give you that damage range hip fire accuracy and bullet velocity um after that we're gonna go down here for the f tac ripper 56 so this is gonna be tuned right here for negative 0.36 and then plus 0.18 aiming auto stability hip fire accuracy and recoil stabilization overall kind of helping round this build out but we of course happen to have the 60 round mag down here i'm a 60 round mag kind of guy and i do believe you actually need the 60 round mag here on this gun and last but definitely not least we have the sc recharge dx site you guys can swap this out for the aimot v4 this is kind of basically like you can use one or the other it's not gonna make a difference but the tuning on this is a negative of 1.55 and all the way max out here on the bottom for that far distance so that's my full build there for the tag 56 next up we got a really good build here for the m4 this is a very high mobility you guys can really enjoy this one this is going to be a lot of fun to use one of my personal favorites so first thing here is that harbinger d20 uh sound suppression bullet velocity the image range recoil smoothness this is tuned all the way for a maximum recoil smoothness and bullet velocity this is one of those things you can actually max out the tunings on some of these attachments you can others you really can't well a majority of them you really can't uh next up in here the high tower 20 barrel this is gonna give you that plus 16 here and then also a negative 0.25 and what this does is that recoil control damage range bullet velocity and hip fire accuracy this is undoubtedly the most effective barrel in the entirety of the m4 category so I highly recommend if you're using this as a primary ar that you guys use this um after that f tac gripper 56 aiming idle stability hip fire accuracy and recoil stabilization here with the plus 0.34 and also a plus 0.34 on the bottom here this is really going to help this gun stabilize out because it does like to kick here quite a bit. After that, we're going to go down here and run the 5.56 high velocity rounds. This is going to be tuned for a plus 0.56 and a plus 3.48, giving you the increase overall in, you know, bullet velocity. So this is going to be huge in terms of making your shots register faster as war zones, not hit scan. Everything is a projectile. So definitely recommend for you guys to do that. And last, but definitely not least, this 60 round mag here. Um, you guys could go for the 45 you really want to, but the 60 is going to be perfectly fine as is. So between this, if you're playing something like solos, you can probably get away with it. But overall, the 60 is going to be your best option so that's my full build there for the m4 next up we're taking a look here at the cast off 762 this is such a good assault rifle to use hits incredibly hard and it's got very controllable recoil so let's get into my build here for it so we have the ty-lr8 compensator we're gonna be tuning this max for a plus 0.80 and a plus 0.16 this helps out your horizontal recoil control this gun definitely likes to bounce around side to side so when you can really kind of mitigate that this makes the gun so so much more easy to be able to handle so i'd recommend for you guys to actually run this after that, the IG-K30 barrel. Uh, this can be tuned for a plus 0.23 and a negative 0.22, giving you that recoil control and bullet velocity increase. We don't care as much about these cons because this is a true AR, so that's entirely okay. Um, after that, we're going to go down here and run the 7.62 high velocity rounds with a negative 0.20 and a negative 6.10, increasing your overall bullet velocity, much like we did for the M4. Uh, we don't really have to worry too much about that damage range con. That's not really going to do anything. F side, we're going to go down here, run the 40 round mag. Uh, this is kind of one of the only downsides to this gun is that it only has a 40 round mag, now like a 50 or a 60, something like that. So that's literally like one of the only cons for running this gun. It hits incredibly hard, but you know, the magazine size isn't that great. It kind of reminds me of like the CR56 AMAX. Lastly, we have the AMOT V4 up in here, uh, negative 2.13, and all they max out here on the bottom. I generally speaking, always max out the distance here in terms of like my sights on these ARs. It just kind of feels a little bit better to me. I don't like it being super close. I like it being just a little bit farther out so I get more peripheral vision when I'm aiming down sight. So that's that. That's my full build there for the cast off 762. Next up on our list is going to be Lockman 556. This is probably the best AR in Warzone right now, at least as of this update. I know there's some other stuff that's going to be shifting around, but this is probably the best one at the moment. Uh, first thing here is that Harbinger D20. We're going to have this tuned here for a plus 1.08 and a plus 0.45. You guys kind of know what it does. I'm not really going to read it off to you. I've, we've had this attachment a couple times already. 
After that, we have the 15.9 Lockman Rat Barrel. This is going to be tuned for for a plus 40 and a plus 15. Uh, this is basically the largest, most effective barrel you can run on this gun. Recoil control, bullet velocity, damage range, hip fire accuracy, all great stuff here. We're trying to make this truly an effective AR, and this is the best way to be able to do it. After that, FTAC Gripper 56. You guys kind of know what it does over here. A negative 0.39 and a plus 0.21 is going to be the tunings for this. After that, going to go down here, run that 60 round mag. We have the option for the 40. Don't ever recommend for you guys to run the 40. Just go for that 60, uh, no matter what you're playing. Solos, duos, trios, quads. It does not matter. DMZ even. Go for that 60. It just makes sense. And lastly, but definitely not least, the AMOP V4 here. Once again, the try and true, you know, precision optic we absolutely love here. Negative 1.35. And of course, max out for that far distance. So that's my full Lockman 5.56 build. Next up, we're going to have you guys build here for the STB 5.56. This is kind of one of those guns you can run more or less as like a sniper sport. It's not the greatest as a true long long range AR so you guys can run as a sniper sport but it's not necessarily like Lockman territory something like that so first thing is me the Corvus slash gen 2 uh this can be a negative 0.52 tune and also a plus 0.15 on the bottom helping the muzzle flash concealment and recoil steadiness just kind of stabilizing the gun out we're not trying to make this thing super effective at long range because that's not what it excels at we're just trying to make it effective for that medium-ish range um skipping the barrel section going straight up in here we're gonna run the VLK laser 7 MW to kind of bolster our overall mobility with this thing a plus 0.18 and negative 31.26 after that, we're going to go on down here for that 42 round mag. Uh, this is the only option we got here short of running the base magazine size of 30. So we definitely do not want to do that. So we're going to run that. After that, we're going to go back here. We're going to stip dash 40 grip. Uh, this is going to give us that increase in recoil control. So this is a plus 0.58 and a plus 0.30. And lastly, but definitely not least, the Cronin Mini Pro. So this is the blue dot, red dot site. Uh, this is going to be the other thing I'd go to besides the AMOP V4 if I'm trying to go for more of that sniper sport. And this is tuned for a negative 1.74. And of course, maxed out there on the bottom for that far distance. So this is a nice little sniper sport gun. Definitely not a true AR that you want to be running as an actual AR. Next up, this is undoubtedly the worst AR in the entire game right now. So I don't recommend for you guys to actually even try running this, but this is the best setup for the worst gun so i just got to give it to you guys because this is an ar it's in the category so we got to go over it so x10 havoc 90 is going to be our attachment of choice here all they max out for recoil stabilization and of course recoil control there on the bottom this is going to help us out with that horizontal and vertical this is a burst fire gun so when you can mitigate the amount of recoil you get between bursts or that the bursts are giving you that means the more accurate your shot is going to be and hopefully the faster your ttk otherwise this gun is going to be even more terrible than it actually already is uh next up the 14 carbine shroud barrel this gives us that recoil control bull velocity and hip recoil control this is kind of like the lesser or the least of the amount of evils in this category because all these barrels frankly kind of suck they really do so we have this tuned here for a plus 0.50 and a plus 0.40 after that, FTAC Ripper 56. Got to stabilize the gun out here. So a plus 0.80 and a plus 0.22 there on the bottom. And then we're going to go down here and run the 5.56 high velocity rounds for a negative 0.47 tune and a negative 6.97 and then for our last attachment in here, we don't even need a magazine because it's the burst fire gun, the aim op V4 here, which is a negative 1.94 and maxed out there on the bottom for that far distance. Like I said, I don't recommend running this gun in any capacity, so do it at your own risk, but this is the best build for the worst gun. All right, next up, we're going to be taking a look at the cast off 74U. This is another assault rifle. You don't really run as an assault rifle. It's kind of more like an SMG because, you know, it's the AK-74U is what everyone kind of uses it as, and that's also what i have it built for this is a very close range gun you're going to be running so don't run this as an actual ar run this as like an smg more or less or maybe a sniper support but otherwise this should be a smg so the corvus slash gen 2 is what we got right here this is going to be maxed out for recoil smoothness and a plus 0.40 this can help us out that recoil steadiness and muzzle flash concealment um, after that, we have the BR-209 barrel. So movement speed and aim down sight speed. Like I said, we're not running this as a true AR. This is going to be largely an SMG. So this is a plus 0.18 and a plus 0.13. And then we're going to go down here, run that 45 round mag. 
45 round mag is kind of a necessity on this gun. We only have the 30 as our base, so the 45 is what we need. Um, after that, we have the true tack grip, and this is going to be a plus 0.61 and a negative 0.25. So I'd recommend for you guys to do that. This just speeds the gun up overall. And lastly, we have the VLK stockless. So all the way down here on the end, uh, this is what's going to make this gun incredibly fast, but it's also going to mess with your recoil. So if you don't want to run something like that, you could get away with running something like the O trees at stock or even the broadside FCT or the Markeep R7. It just kind of comes down to your personal preference and choice, but this is going to be a very mo high mobility build old uh, cast off 74u setup so you guys can really enjoy having some fun with this one it's not bad at all and it, it's a lot of fun to run next up we're gonna be taking a look here at the cast off 545 this is another really great ar in the game incredibly low recoil and very easy to be able to use so let's get into it so we have the x10 havoc 90 at a negative 0.31 and a plus 0.26 Horizontal vertical recoil control just stabilizes the gun out. It makes it incredibly easy to be able to control uh, the IG-K30 barrel, a plus 0.18 and a negative 0.21 right there. Um, we're going to go on down here for the FTAC Gripper 56 here. Once again, a try and true, you know, attachment for a lot of these guns with a plus 0.59 and a plus 0.40. And then we're going to go on down here for that 60 round mag. Uh, like, you know, some of the other guns, we have the option for a 40 round mag or 45 in this case. Uh, but I recommend always to go for the 60. This is, uh, I kind of wish that the Castoff 762 had this option, but we only got the 40 for that. But you have the 45 and the 60 for this. So this makes this gun pretty solid. Uh, so I'd recommend the 60. And then we're, of course, going to throw in the AMOP V4 here for our sight of choice with a negative 2.61 and a negative 1.65. So that's our full build there for the Castoff 545. Next up, the Chimera. This is another AR that pretty much doesn't ever get used as a true AR. It's kind of like your hybrid sniper support and, you know, SMG. That's kind of pretty much what this thing's getting used as so let's hop into it so first thing we're going to use the fss shark fin 90 here so this is going to be a negative 0.28 and a negative 0.10 this is going to help us out the aiming idle stability it's not going to do too much but you really don't need that much when you're using this gun for closer ranges um after that we have the 10 sa phoenix barrel this is going to give us that uh damage range increase bullet velocity hit fire accuracy and recoil control with a negative 0.16 tune right there and a negative 0.40 all i max out there on the bottom so that one's pretty easy to be able to do um, next up, we're going to go up in here for the VLK Laser 7 MW. This is going to be all the way maxed out here on the bottom for sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed, giving us our an increase in aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and sprint to fire speed overall, which is really sick. Then we're going to go down here, run the 45 round mag. So, uh, like this has the 30 round mag stock. Don't want to ever go for that 30. Always want to go for the 45, the 50, the 60, something like that. Um, you never really want to run an AR, I guess, maybe with the exception for the M16. You really shouldn't be running the M16 in general, but that's one of the only ones you can get away with not running a magazine on. And then lastly, we happen to have the Bruin Flash Grip here, which is going to give us uh, our spring to fire speed and aim down sight speed with a tune of negative 0.71 and negative 0.25. So this is a really nice uh, hybrid AR SMG sniper support that you guys can get, you know, some really good uh, TTK out of. Next up, we're taking a look here at the M13B. This is a gun that I personally really enjoy myself using apart from like, you know, the M4, the Hemlock, Lockman 556. Uh, this is a really fun build here to be able to have. So uh, first thing is going to be the X10 ported for that vertical recoil control. This gun loves to kind of bounce up. Doesn't go to the side too much, it's just vertically. Uh, so we have the plus 0.7 there for that soon and a plus 0.10 there on the bottom uh, next up we have the 14 Bruin echelon barrel whatever you want to call this thing but it's a plus 0.40 tune for that and a plus 0.34 this is undoubtedly the most effective barrel you can run for this gun so i'd recommend it for you guys to do that we're trying to build this as a true ar like it is going to be good for at range maybe not like super far range because of the site we have but at you know decent range um, after that, we're going to go down here, run the 5.56 high velocity rounds for the plus 0.52 and a negative 2.90 down there. Then we're going to go down here and run also the 60 round mag. Uh, we have the option for the 45 and we have the option for the 60, but I always recommend the 60 on this gun. It's not like the M4 where I sometimes feel like I can get away with it. I always go for the 60 here on this gun, no matter what. And lastly, kind of uh, a bit of a one off here for this uh, top five, not top five, but like, you know, best ARs is the SC Lone Wolf Optic. This is pretty much like a holographic, but I actually happen to have the one that comes with the good old days bundle that was one of the uh, pretty much like the eight OG ACRs. 
So I have a blue dot on this thing. Normally speaking, it's like a red dot of some sort, but this is a negative 0.77 and a negative 1.95. If you guys really want to, you get to run like an AMOT V4, a Chrono Mini Pro, something like that. It's not really gonna matter. I just actually like running this. So that's my full build there for the M13B. Really solid, really good to use. All right, moving on down here to our second to last gun, the ISO Hemlock. This actually has made its way back into the meta. It's actually, I think, the second best assault rifle behind the Lockman 5.56 as of right now. So here's my general build overview for it. First thing, the Harbinger D20, you guys kind of get what this thing does. Uh, plus 0.99 here and a plus 0.65 here on this. Um, we're gonna go for that Fielder T50 barrel. This is pretty much what everyone always runs. Uh, plus 0.18 and a negative 0.22. Pretty simple. Uh, I don't really got to explain this one too much since there's a lot of ISO builds out there. Uh, FTAC Ripper 56. This is going to be the tune for that. Negative 0.57, a plus 0.27. Pretty simple on this one. And then uh, we're going to go down here, run the 45 round mag. So 45 is definitely the way to go. I mean, obviously, you can't run 30. You definitely cannot run 20. That'd be ridiculous. So we're just got to go for the 45. And then we're going to finish this off of the Aim Op V4 here with a negative 0.87. And all they max out in the bottom that far distance so that's my full build there for the iso hemlock it's back in the meta they probably made too many bundles for this guns so they had to buff it to make it actually good again because it was actually kind of trash for a while and for our last build here today we're going to be taking a look at the tempest razorback so this is actually not that bad of an ar but you're not probably going to be running this as like a true ar this is like a medium range sniper support gun and because we're going to be utilizing some iron sights on this one so First thing is going to be the Komodo Heavy for horizontal recoil control. All the way max out for recoil stabilization and a plus 0.16 there on the bottom. Um, after that, we're going to go up in here for the 16 Tanker V Barrel. Recoil control and bullet velocity on this one with a maximum here. Uh, max out for recoil steadiness at a plus 50. And then down here for a plus 0.21 for a little bit more damage range. Um, then we're going to go down here. F-Tac Ripper 56, plus 0.39 to plus 0.40. And then we're going to go down here, run that 60 round mag. So option for 45 and 60. If you want a little bit more mobility, I'd go for the 45. But I generally think that the 60 is going to be more than OK. Um, I don't feel like you're going to be lacking mobility by having the 60. But it's kind of personal preference at this point, 45 or 60. Just kind of like pick whatever you want. And then lastly, we're going to go down here for the ERG-X1. This can give us that recoil control increase. So a plus 0.26 and a plus 0.45 down here. And that is my full build there for the Tempest Razorback. That has been my best build for every single assault rifle in Wars. And if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe for more. Check out these other videos on screen, and I'll see you guys later.